Hello and welcome to what will be essentially a very short presentation. Uh, the whole idea of this little video is to show Evolver and its usage within various popular DAWs. I want to go through a few do's and don'ts in order to give you an idea of whether this plugin is going to work for you. So I want to start by explaining exactly what this plugin is and what to expect from it. And then I'm going to give you some examples of it working within various doors. So let's get started. So I guess everybody's first question is what is Evolver and how can it work for me? And that depends. Um, Evolver is kind of a cross between a sample based synthesizer and a sequencer. But not really a sequencer in the traditional sense. It's more like a four channels of auto accompaniment which you can create yourself and program yourself. Now I'm a big fan of AUM but I'm also a Cubase user for many years so I flirt between those two packages. Now as most of you know the most difficult part of writing a song is coming up with ideas. So if you're looking for inspiration, maybe some backing, uh, just to start you off and get a song going, this might be the tool for you. It's also great for creating evolving uh, sounds, so you can string together multi-samples or single samples to create um, atmospheres and backings and, uh, and all sorts of stuff. So it's great for both of those things. Now one important distinction between the way Evolver works and say a piano keyboard that has built in auto accompaniment is when you start to play that piano keyboard it starts immediately because it's it's a standalone piece of kit. Because we are hosted within an app when you play a chord it needs to start on beat which means that there might be a slight delay before the music starts. That makes it sometimes quite difficult to play to. you just got to be aware of that and not try to be too elaborate with your playing technique. But it's a great way of creating backing and a great tool for following chord progressions. So instead of me rambling on about this, you maybe want to go and take a look at the introduction video where I have lots of examples of it in action. There's also two programming tutorials which I'm about to release too. So let's quickly go through loading Evolver in various DAWs, starting with my favourite AUM. Now because Evolver emits audio, we need to create a new channel strip of type audio. Click on the plus at the top, and from the audio unit extensions you need to pick Evolver FX. Now once the program's loaded, tap on the program icon to launch the interface. Now as you can see it's working in kind of a compacted mode here but I'm going to load in a default performance and we can ha hear how it sounds. Now you can actually extend this interface and it will attempt to fill the space you've given it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is demonstrate syncing. I'm going to turn on the metronome and I'm going to bring up the keyboard and I'm going to enable latching of chords so that I don't have to hold the chords down. So as you can see there, there was no real sync process, no setup process. It just automatically syncs to the host. And just be aware of that with your playing style, don't be too erratic. The idea is that this follows a chord melody. So unless you've got a specific patch with keyboard splits, don't try and play solo over the top. Okay, so let's turn our attention to most people's DAW of choice when it comes to songwriting, and that is Cubasis 3. So, we're going to start off by creating a new channel strip uh, of type MIDI and if we click on the little instrument at the left we can navigate through the uh, audio units and pick Evolver. Now again this is compact mode we can expand into full screen mode and you've got full access to everything here. I'm going to load the same default performance as last time and we're going to try and record a short 
followed by progression. Now I'm, I've brought up the keyboard and I've got metronome enabled so I think we're just about ready to go. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm very, being very exact here and trying to play those chords slightly ahead of time so that we hit the beat. Um, so let's just hear what that sounds like. Now, although we are reasonably CPU friendly here, uh, for obvious reasons, you might want to freeze that track. So. Um, Cubase is one of those DAWs that has a freeze feature which allows us to unload the audio unit. Now depending on the complexity of the Evolver performance there could be anything up to 64 instruments going off at any one time so if you don't intend to use the freeze feature I suggest sticking to maybe three instances at max. So now finally we turn ourselves to um, GarageBand. I always get plenty of people with GarageBand failing to load audio units. Why? So the first thing you want to do is start a new project of type external and select Evolver FX from the menu. Now Evolver FX does support full screen mode if you press the little arrows. Um, I will load in that same performance again and we'll have a go at recording a couple of bars of uh, audio in here. Just making sure it records okay. That sounds remarkably like the uh, default tempo in here is not 120 beats per minute. Again, you can see from the display, I deliberately pressed those chords slightly ahead of time to ensure the sequencer had those notes registered before um, the um, each beat. Um, now, GarageBand also has a freeze feature, but in, in this case, it's called Merge. Great name. Um, let's see if it worked. Okay, I think that just about covers all the basics. Like I said, there'll be plenty of uh, extra tutorials coming out very shortly, so stay tuned for those. And thank you for watching.